All right. So now let's get back to the electrophilic aromatic substitution with other electrophiles. So so far we have been looking at you know for example bromination. So the basic reaction just to recall is basically the reaction of an electrophile with benzene to give you the electrophilic aromatic substituted product which is this right now the electrophile can actually be a variety of compounds and so for example the electrophile that we can think about is one of the most important reactions that organic chemists are interested in which is the formation of a carbon carbon bond so how do we generate carbon based electrophile right so this is something that we have looked at previously so for example carbon based electrophiles can be produced as intermediates during SN1 reactions. So for example here if you have an alcohol such as this and if you expose this to H plus right and based on the SN1 mechanism that we have previously looked at right or E1 for that matter we are familiar with the formation of a protonation of this center so it's going to form OH2 plus and if you were to draw the uh, arrow pushing mechanism so it looks like this. this is a lone pair on oxygen it attacks here and gives you the OH2 plus and now you can propose this carbon oxygen bond being broken because water is an excellent leaving group so you would end up producing tertiary carbocation over here as well as water right so this is something that we already know okay from our previous courses so therefore the formation of the carbocation is something that we have some prior exposure to so now the question is can we put both of these in the same bottle and that is what we want to do if you want to do you know friedel crafts alkylation reaction so the reaction is as follows so you need to be able to generate a carbocation in the presence of benzene and one of the ways in which you could do this is to react it with an alkyl chloride in the presence of a lewis acid okay such as alcl3 right so we already seen prior that when you have br2 in the presence of ALCl3, you know, you have a weak bond that is being formed with aluminium, and this aluminium is then gives rise to a complex such as this, where you have this being kicked off and giving you Br plus, which is the active electrophile, and ALCl. 3 Br minus and so this is the role of aluminum chloride so if you were to think about a similar role for this group over here then you can imagine that instead of the bromine you can have the chloride can be lost by using sort of this chemistry okay so now let's look at this so instead of bromine we now have tertiary butyl chloride, right? This compound, and you have a lone pair on Cl, and that's again going to coordinate with aluminium chloride, and this is going to result in the formation of a complex such as this Cl, where it's going to be bound to AlCl3, and then you can push electrons in the following manner, and gives you the formation of this bond and it's going to give you the, the tertiary butyl carbocation as one of the products and now you know the rest of the chemistry it's fairly straightforward so when benzene reacts with a carbocation you're going to have the formation of the intermediate that we discussed earlier which is going to give you this kind of a intermediate right and the hydrogen over here and you have a positive charge being formed and the rest of the bonds are essentially the same right so now 
this is the intermediate that we are looking at and as we discussed earlier there could be some base maybe there is some amount of chloride that is floating around as a dissociation of this complex and it attacks and you have a loss of a proton essentially to give you the product which is nothing but the alkyl benzene right so which we should look at in the next slide right so you have this kind of a compound and if you lose a proton maybe there's some mild base such as chloride ion being present and it's going to give you the desired product which is this okay so this is something that you know we could uh, straightforward maybe could propose and this is uh, essentially called as the friedel cross alkylation reaction okay so again as i said the name is not very important here but you need to understand the mechanism all right now let's go back to the example of sn1 reaction so here if you imagine that the carbocation is indeed being produced when you take a tertiary butyl alcohol and uh, add h plus so under these conditions as well you would get Friedel crafts that type of reaction and if you add benzene here to this then the product that you want to get is this i would urge you to go back and uh, solve this problem work out the mechanism of this reaction okay so this is an assignment for all of you go back and do this so let's start this part of the lecture with a problem so the problem that uh, we are looking at is a nice mechanistic question. So we all know that when you react benzene with bromine, there is basically no reaction if you do it in the dark and you need a, a loose acid such as AlCl3. Okay? But this reaction to give you the product bromobenzene is possible if you add a small amount of catalytic pyridine okay so just to give you the structure of pyridine is this the nitrogen so if you add a small amount of pyridine the reaction goes forward and gives you the product bromobenzene okay so the question is what is the mechanism of this reaction all right so all of you work on this and we will uh, take this up sometime in the next few lectures all right so now I want to discuss now in this lecture the sort of uh, energy profile associated with the electrophilic aromatic substitution. So just to be clear, you know, we normally represent the energy profile in the following manner. We have a x-axis and a y-axis and so the, the x-axis is basically reaction coordinate. Okay, so some people also call it progress of reaction and this is energy right so when we want to start we would start with the starting compound basically benzene and i'm just going to draw benzene and a generic electrophile okay so let's call it uh, e plus and so let's say this is the energy level that we are starting okay so here is the energy of the starting material right now we know that the first step of the reaction is actually to form the the intermediate the intermediate is basically the complex where the aromaticity has broken and that structure is as follows so you have e and then you have h and then there is a positive charge over here and so this is going to be the structure of the complex and now Based on what we sort of uh, know about this, it's quite likely that the energy of this uh, complex is substantially higher than that of the individual starting compounds because 
the intermediate actually has you know lost aromaticity in its structure right so therefore if you want to look at it you can consider that the product or the intermediate that is formed is going to be quite highly energetic okay so what i'm doing is i'm just trying to get this intermediate out of the way so that we can draw the remaining structure clearly all right nevertheless so now the product that is going to be formed is basically the electrophilic aromatic substituted product which is basically e and you're going to get a byproduct of h plus right so which is going to be basically the loss of proton right now if you want to look at this many of the electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions are actually exothermic in nature and so you would imagine that the product is going to be more stable than the starting material so this is going to be my delta h or delta g okay and uh, now coming to the sort of intermediate over here we're going to try again to see if this intermediate can be moved and yes this time i'm able to select all of the structures and i'm just going to move it over here so that it's easy for us to draw out the energy profile so i'm just going to call this as i which is basically the intermediate and so the i structure is over here and now if i have to draw the energy profile it's going to look something like this right so there's going to be a fairly high barrier to get to the intermediate and then the intermediate is going to collapse and give you the product all right so now what we know based on hammond postulate is that the transition state which is approximately here the transition state is going to resemble the product which means that you know essentially the hammond postulate says that in a highly endothermic reaction the transition state you know sort of resembles the product and as a corollary in a highly exothermic reaction the transition state resembles the starting material okay so therefore in electrophilic aromatic substitution you can imagine that the intermediate that is formed is going to be of high energy and therefore the transition state leading to that intermediate is going to resemble the product so a lot of this is going to be important when we want to understand the course of a reaction for example from a regioselectivity standpoint right so you know from your prior courses that you know the, well, there is a distinct ortho para selectivity versus meta selectivity and so on so all of this can be explained using this concept all right so just to complete this diagram this sort of measure here is going to be your activation energy or delta g double dagger okay so that pretty much takes care of the you know electrophilic aromatic substitution and now you will notice that the barrier for the second reaction or the inter reaction of the intermediate is not very very high because you would assume that the intermediate is going to collapse fairly rapidly and give you the product there are examples in the literature of uh, extremely stable intermediates that is the they hang around for a fairly large amount of time but most of these uh, intermediates are actually quite unstable okay so that sort of brings us to the conclusion of this energy profile and to summarize the reactions of electrophilic aromatic substitutions are usually exothermic and not necessarily so but many of them are exothermic and the formation of the intermediate which is the first step is the rate determining step and you know the transition state leading to the formation of the intermediate actually resembles the intermediate and therefore a lot of the stability issues can be taken care of by understanding this concept all right so now uh, let's move on to the next topic which is basically uh, friedel crafts acylation reactions and so friedel crafts acylation reaction basically depends on on a very important sort of reaction that some of you already quite familiar with which is basically when an acid chloride reacts with a lewis acid such as al cl3 right so you can apply the same principles that we looked at previously which is that the aluminum is going to start coordinating with the chlorine and it starts uh, pulling electrons in this direction right and so once that happens you're going to generate r c double bond o cl and then there's going to be a, a complex with al cl3 and 
this is going to eventually produce the electrons are going to be pulled from here and uh, while those electrons are being pulled it's also likely that the lone pair of oxygen is in play and it moves over here okay so if you write out the product that is formed you will get r c triple bond o with a positive charge and you would get al cl 4 minus okay so this is the kind of intermediate that you start producing and so therefore rcocl in the presence of aluminum chloride is going to generate highly reactive electrophilic species which is rc triple bond o plus okay normally if you have uh, you know water or something then this is going to get hydrolyzed and give you a carboxylic acid but uh, since we are uh, dealing with electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions this intermediate that is produced is going to react with benzene and R C triple bond O plus this is going to react with benzene and you are going to end up with an intermediate such as this right C double bond O R and then this hydrogen is going to remain the way it is and the other double bonds that are shown here will continue and there is going to be a positive charge okay so now when you do this you end up with you know a situation where you are going to have uh, possibly a loss of proton uh, which is going to occur in the presence of a base it attacks and regenerates aromaticity and it gives you the product which is the acylated benzene okay so if r is basically ch3 then you will start with acetyl chloride and you will get uh, acetophenone and so on and so forth so this reaction is called the friedel crafts so the friedel and crafts were actually two different people who got together and discovered this acylation reaction first and then subsequently they also found the alkylation reaction okay so this is known as friedel crafts acylation reaction and as we looked at previously you know it's not important for us to know the name of the reaction but it's important for us to understand the mechanism and also the implication of this reaction so just to understand the energetics of this process so we have a very similar energy profile to what we looked at in the previous case so you have r c double bond o cl it's going to sort of that is the energy that we are looking at and now the product that is going to be formed is r c triple bond o plus plus cl minus and if you're doing it in the presence of aluminum chloride it's going to give you that's going to catalyze the reaction so this is going to give you intermediate here which is this okay so this is going to be the first step of the reaction i'm just going to redraw this so that it's a little clearer over here so basically this is r c one two three oxygen and then there is a positive charge okay so this positive charge is going to be mainly located on the oxygen right so you know we'll get back to that concept a little bit later during the problem solving session right and the rest of the energy profile would be identical to the reaction of uh, benzene with an electrophile so this is going to be the important step in uh, friedel crafts isolation is the generation of the electrophile the next important steps are, are described in the previous section which is basically the electrophilic aromatic substitution the general mechanism for that okay now if you can do this 
if you understand this reaction now let's look at a problem that will help us put a little bit of perspective into this reaction so the problem is as follows so you start with this very interesting compound which is 1 2 3 4 cl okay you know and if you want to number the carbons it's going to be 1 2 3 4 it's four carbons and then expose this to aluminum chloride i get a product which essentially has m by z which is m by z is basically mass spec when we record the mass spectrometry then we get a, a mass by charge ratio and the m by z is we get a peak at 1 4 6 point zero seven. okay so the question here is what is the product that is formed okay so you can take some time and work on this problem we'll uh, take this up again in a subsequent lecture